Carla, welcome to the couch. You've had a fantastic career and life. Tell me a little bit about your past. A little bit about my past, Fred. No, you were born in... <laughs> which, which past? OK. All right. Uh, I've had uh, at least three lifetimes already up to now. But I was born in Holland mm -hmm. and in 1938, just a few months before the, the World War broke out, and came to Australia in 1950 with my family as the eldest of seven children. And uh, I grew up in Melbourne, but uh, then I entered the convent, a convent at the age of 18. I became um, a sister, a nun. So what made you want to do that? What made me want to do that? Well, I thought at the time that I had a vocation and I couldn't really choose not to. I didn't want to go in. I wanted to go in. I didn't want to go in. No, yes, yes. But uh, really, later on, I realised that I went in because I couldn't face life. I wasn't ready at the age of 18 to think of being responsible for myself, mm -hmm. to think of starting a relationship or anything like that. It was best to hide out in a convent. That's so my what, main motivation. So what year did you join the convent? That was 1957. It's a long time ago. It's a long time and ago. And how long did you stay there? Oh, I wanted to stay for the rest of my life. I told my mother to burn all my, um, all, all my notebooks, all my journals, because I was always writing. And um, she, she, in the end, she burnt one and all the other, kept all the others. So they all came back to me after she died. I, I wanted to stay and dedicate my life to God. I did manage to do that. I'm still doing that, but not in the com I stayed for 12 years. 12 years. 12 years now, to answer tell your me, question. what were the things that came out of that? What did you learn from being a nun? Well, I was protected for 12 years from the world because I was so naive, so much head in the clouds. You know, anything could have happened to me. And I learned meditation. I learned how to be very quiet within myself and to contact the divine inside myself. And I think that is the same no matter what religion you belong to, or now it's spiritual for me, not religious. But uh, that's what I learned, and I'm very grateful for that. So that was your calling. You did that for 12 years. Yes. You were a Catholic nun. Yes. What made you turn your back on the, the Catholic Church? Or did you turn your back on the Catholic Church? Well, I did. I didn't turn my back on the Catholic Church to leave the convent. But uh, you remember the Vatican II and Pope John the Twenty Third. Yes. Well, he introduced a lot of changes to humanise nuns because mm. we had such a strict life and we a strict rule of silence and of obedience. I was an obedient child, okay. Mm -hmm. So we were supposed to revisit all our vows and to we were allowed to, to think and speak. Now, I thought that was fantastic, right? And I became the proverbial um, adolescent. Right, I'd be, don't Were you outspoken? Child. I was outspoken, yes. I was enthusiastic. I thought this was, we were ready to change, and, but I was the only one. Did you get into trouble? Things. Mother Superior? Oh, a, lo a lot of trouble. And what sort of punishment did you have to cop? Oh, well, um, <laughs> um, hmm. You didn't get lashes or beatings or anything? Oh, either. we did that to ourselves. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, given, we were given a whip. Yep. To whip ourselves with, no kidding. Well, that could be seen quite different these days. You whip yourself. Why would that, that, you're talking about many years ago, 50, over 50 years ago, you yes. were given a whip. I was given a whip to whip myself as with. As punishment? As punishment, yes. And did you have to whip yourself a lot? Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, it's something that I got used to and started, you know, if it's cold weather, you start whipping yourself around it the legs. It warms you up very quickly. It warms you up and you start enjoying it. Did, did you ever have any, I know, not breaking the rules, but did you ever go outside the rules. Did you fall in love? Did you meet someone and fall in love while you were a nun? Yes. And that was seen as not possible in those days, was it? Well, not, not allowed. Not allowed? Not allowed, yes. I think it happened. How did, you do, how did you deal with that? Well, mm, I was unrequited love, which hurt so much. I was uh, overseas at the time. I fell in love with Sister Alice. It's, uh, it's all in my book. Mm -hmm. right? My book's a very honest book. It's all there. And um, that's because, you know, sexual energy, when you, your sexuality, when you become a nun, yeah, you make a vow of chastity, right? But then what do you do with your sexual energy and your sexual nature? You put it on a shelf. Right? Well, you can't, I couldn't do that. Put it on the shelf, then what, you know? Then you become a bitchy person because, mm. you know, you're not being natural anymore. So how did you deal with it? What did you do? I fell in love, that's what I, that's and, what and I did. The, and the sister, sorry, what was her name? Alice. Sister Alice, did she reciprocate? Or oh, did she no. push you away? Well, 
she thought, um, well, she didn't have any feelings for me. That's, that's the main problem. She was a rebellious kind of person herself. But, and I think it would have been a great friendship, but she, she didn't like me. That's a big problem. She didn't like me, you see. So it was unrequited, and it was so painful for three whole years, right? Mm -hmm. But I've seen, went, I went to see her mm -hmm. after I came out of the convent. I've seen her twice in England. I still, I think she still doesn't like me very much, but being Irish, she had to sort of welcome me, you know? So, so tell me, how did you make the, the changeover? Because you had a very interesting changeover. You, you became a prostitute, is that yes. true? Yes, that's so true. So how did you go from being a nun, loving Sister Alice, and then yeah. becoming a prostitute. How did that all happen? It happened very naturally. Like, I was married, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I had a child, even a very young child. But I was married without knowing anything about sex or relationships or passion, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I married a man who was a good man and who loved me, and I thought you couldn't do better than that. And then, when I was 34, I met up with a guy who was 19. He was uh, driving a car down to Perth with me from up there, from, Car from where it is, you know, the mining, mining place. Kalgoorlie? No, no, up, up north. Further, is it? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Regardless. Yeah, that's And right. what happened? Well, there was chemistry. I experienced chemistry for the first time with in my life. Huh? Yeah, with Aaron, his name is, right? And um, this was so irresistible, mm -hmm. really. So irresistible, I couldn't, I just had to explore this. We were together for only two weeks, and it was a beautiful and very innocent and very passionate affair. Mm -hmm. And um, but for only two weeks. But after that, I knew what I was missing, and I couldn't go back to my was marriage. That, was that the sex you that enjoyed was, it? Uh, the sex I, I enjoyed the the experience of uh, real intimacy, really, because there was so much openness between the two of us, uh, so much honesty and openness. For, you know, between two people who didn't know each other at all. But because we knew there was only two weeks that we would be together, I think we didn't, we made the most of our time. But after that, I really wanted to explore sex and men and passion and all that. And I thought the, the most honest thing to do would be to become a prostitute, meet lots of men, have lots of experience, instead of going for a relationship and not, without being ready for it. Well, hold that thought, because we're going to take a break on the couch, and then we're going to come back with part two of this great interview with Carla Van Ray. Stay with us, you're watching The Couch. Part two of our fantastic interview with Carla Van Ray. She's an author, a Catholic nun in her past, and a prostitute later in life. But today she's an inspirational speaker, and today she's on The Couch. We were talking, uh, Carla, about you leaving the church as a Catholic nun, and moving into prostitution. What was the other reason that made you make that decision? Fred, when I became a prostitute, I was exploring my sexuality because it was so confused. When I became a nun, I wanted to hide from my sexuality because what, it was so confused. What happened was I was abused as a child. And this as was a around three years of age. That's right, between three and 12 years of age. And it was so, the, the feelings around that were so awful, so hard to absorb as a child, so hard to live with as a child, that I didn't want to know about it. I Did didn't want to remember no it. Did you have help at all in dealing with that abuse? No, no, especially not in Holland. Was, it was all kept quiet. As a matter of fact, I did speak out uh, to the Catholic priest at the primary school. This was in Holland. Mm -hmm. And something came, must have come back to my father, who became very afraid and wanted to silence me forever. Okay. And he, he was very violent. And in, that's the way they he, dealt with it. That's, that's the way it was dealt with. But as a result, my feeling my self-esteem and my self-confidence and all the, um, the, the notion I had about myself went right down the tube. And I thought I was the baddest, worst girl in the world. Mm. But I couldn't live with those feelings. I couldn't really acknowledge those feelings as a child. So I hid them for myself. Until you later life. It took a long time. It took about 40 years later till I started to remember this. What helped you deal with the process? What helped me deal yeah. with it, Fred, was after I became tired of being a sex worker. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it for years, and then I wanted to change my career. And I found that I couldn't. Did, did you get a lot of flack from people you knew from saying, oh, how can you become, how can you go from hey, being Fred, a... Hey, Fred, I didn't talk about you it. You never said anything? I never said anything. I was pretending to be a teacher. I can was I ask, was the money good in those days? Yeah, but Did I you was... Did live a good lifestyle? 
Uh, yes, I, I did, but I wasn't wise enough to stick it into real estate, for instance, you know. And money was an embarrassment to me. I just made a vow of poverty. And how right? did your fam did the family know? Did anyone find out that you were doing this? Mm, um, if they did, they never let on. Okay. So yeah, so it was a very lonely life. Extremely lonely. How long lonely, did you do isolated. that? How long were you a sex worker? Till age fifty-four. That's quite a long time. That's quite so a long time. So how many years would that have that been? That was uh, twenty years. That's a long time. You mm. had your long service mm. twice over. <laughs> if you look at it that way. Well, I had breaks in between. I did have breaks in between, but yeah. Did you ever regret going that way? Oh, no. Oh, I think I did for a while, but not now. Did, did you ever regret leaving the church? Now at your age today, you're doing inspirational speaking. You're helping other people deal with problems that they may have yes, sexually yep. or yep. mentally, whatever they might mm -hmm. be the problem. You're helping people by, by helping them out with a therapy where it comes to motivational yes. speaking or inspirational speaking, as you say. Mm -hmm. Do you ever regret not staying in the church? No, Fred. I was meant to be in the church so, to see quite through it, right through it, so that I could understand exactly that I never need to go back there again, okay? Because religion is about uh, all about the outside. You, you know you're a good person mm. if you follow all the rules, if you take all your cues from outside of yourself, which is the opposite of spirituality where you, you obey your inner knowing, you know? And to me, that's a vow of obedience. That's what the vow of obedience should be, not listening to the superior, but listening to your, Yourself. being really willing to listen to the inner truth, you see. Um, uh, Carla, what made you make the decision to give it up? What made you say, nope, no more, I'm not doing that anymore? Ah, oh, um, at, at the time I had a broken toe, I had a very sore back, I couldn't get out of bed by myself. One of my clients came to get, out, get me out of bed, shoved me in the shower, <laughs> take me to lunch. Yeah. And then a call came from Holmes West of all places, because my girlfriend had said, put your name down with Holmes West. And I said, what? She said, yes. So I did, to please her. Mm. And the call came, there's a unit for you in Denmark, Carla, yep. in Denmark, on the south coast of WA. Yep. And I said, do you want it? And I said, yes, yes, I want it. Look, I was there for two weeks. Two weeks later, I lived in Denmark. Wow. And that was that just was a choice. Breaking. God's call girl is a play on words like, um, I followed God's call in many ways, and I didn't, I didn't um, hesitate to jump. Now that's also the name of your book that you've, yes, you've written. Tell yes. us about that book quickly. The book took 15 years to write. And it's I wrote it God's from Call Girl. God's Call Girl. Um, uh, it's, uh, it spans 64 years. It's told with as much honesty and frankness. Is there a lot of emotional. humor in the book? There's some. Yes, there a is a bit of. Humor of in you. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, sometimes it's a bit of sly humor, especially about the Catholic Church. I bet you there's a lot of stories you can tell about the there's Catholic Church. There's a lot church. of stories, in, but there's lots of, yes, that's right, but there are a lot of stories in there anyway, mm. um, without hurting anybody. I don't, I don't think anyone gets hurt by any of the stories. Mm. This is your life, isn't it, really? 60 years of your life. 64 years of my life, yes. 64 years told in a book called God's Call Girl. Yeah, that's right. Fantastic. Now, you've written other books as well. Do you want to just touch on those as well, just quickly? Okay, yes. So, Aaron, whom I met when I was 34, and he was 19, yep. He came back into my life 30 years later after this book was published. Mm -hmm. And um, so we took up where we left off. Really? Yeah, that's right. And the, the second book is the story of that love affair, it, well, that, that evolution of a relationship, really. Are you because, still with him? Um, we are still extremely good friends, and he comes to see me. He lives in dark and I have to ask, is the sex good? <laughs> the sex is the best, you know. Really? Yeah, that's right. I believe you. Absolutely, yes. Well, I learned, but with my relationship with Aaron, I learned intimacy because as a prostitute, you have to be in control all yes. the time, right? You're not able to really surrender to your man. You, that's not what it's about, you see. You're supposed to act. I wasn't a very good actress. I didn't know how to pretend a lot of the time, which I think my clients appreciated in me. But yeah, with Aaron, I learned intimacy. Okay? Tell me, uh, I know we're right out of time, but tell me about the way you can help other people, because I know you're doing inspirational speaking. If yeah. people want to get in touch, mm -hmm. what sort of work do you do with people now? What, uh, what helps people is the fact that I know how they feel. And I respect how they feel. I don't judge anybody. People who have been abused judge themselves yeah. very severely, okay? And very deeply inside, they hate themselves, mm -hmm. which is a great block towards enjoying life and towards yeah. wellness in life. Yes, that's right, and abundance. All so that how do you thing. help them? They come and see you? They come and, and see me. And you spend one-on-one -on -one time with them? Yes, yes, I do. That's right. And I'm and assuming with all your experience in life, you're able to put your experience to help with them. 
Uh, yes, well, that's MDA. exactly, yes, exactly, yes. So my aim is for, the, for my clients to learn how to love themselves again, right? To love and to completely love and accept themselves again. Thank you very much, Kala. I think you've said it all. Tell me one last thing I want to ask. Is, is, there, is the truth behind you making a movie out of your life story? I heard someone saying they want hey, to Hey, I've sent my book away to a movie maker in the States recently. Lord knows what's going to happen out of that. It takes a good screenwriter to Send make a movie out ABC. of this. Send it to the ABC. I reckon they'd be interested to make a great, new, a fantastic story. Okay. Thank you for being on the couch today, Carla Van Ray. You're yeah, a wonderful great. person. Good luck with everything you do, and maybe we can have you back on the show again. All right. To give us some advice. Oh, that'll be that'll be all right. That's Calavan Ray, and she's on the couch today.